Hey, welcome back. We have another super useful video on how to use QuickBooks Online to manage your rental properties. So we're going to dive right into it. And we're going to show you how I'm going to show you how I set up my accounting books to manage my rental properties, which has saved me a ton of time when it comes to taxes. And it's given me some peace of mind as a business owner, being able to pull up the reports I need, see everything I need. All right. So uh, last video, I showed you how we would set up invoicing for our tenants. Uh, check that one out if you haven't yet. But I want to start with a really important tip that we didn't get to last time, which is on the invoicing how to save yourself time with recurring invoices. All right, so I'm gonna show you that to start, and then we're gonna get into some chart of accounts uh, discussions, all right? So to start here, as you recall from the last video, we have an invoice out to our customer, all right? $1,700, half of that is in rent, and then the other half is in a security deposit. Either way, I still, I'm still to get owed 1,700 from this tenant. So what we could do with this, and what I'm going to do, is make this recurring. What that does is it helps for the future uh, because I don't want to every single month have to go in for all of my tenants and set up invoices. We should obviously make that recurring so that they get those automatically. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the one that I was working on because it's got a lot of good information here. And I'm gonna click make recurring and it's gonna bounce me over to the recurring invoice template. And it's going to pre-populate a lot of information. So first of all, the tenant's name, the type to be scheduled. I like to create these, for example, 10 days in advance. And so what that means is if this invoice is dated for the 1st of March, they're going to get it 10 days before as a little reminder that, hey, you have money that will be coming due soon. And what I find is that a lot of my tenants pay it early, which is awesome, right? Okay, so here's the customer, their email address. Here's some options. Um, Automatically send the emails. I definitely want that. That way I don't have to come in here and click send email. So you're going to get it as soon as it's created. I also like to include unbilled charges. Now we haven't talked about that too much yet, but what that would do is if I incur an expense that is actually something I need to pass on to my customer, for example, maybe they um, like break a window or something like that, right? And I get the window repaired. I'm going to log that expense to my rental property. I'm also going to mark it billable to that customer. And then as their next invoice comes up, it's gonna put the cost of that window on their next invoice, all right? How do you want your tenant to be able to pay? Talked about it last week, I like to do the free bank, bank transfer. For some customers, I'll turn on cards, but I usually don't, and, and if I do, I'll, I'll typically add a payment fee for that because QuickBooks will charge you, okay? Interval, monthly, on the first day of the month, it's already pre-populated with that, so I love that. Start date, when do you want it to start? Now, I've already sent the first invoice uh, that was for, I think, the 1st of February. So I'm going to start this one on the 1st of March. And end date, here what you could do is you could put the lease end date, okay? Uh, you could do after, you know, say 11 or 12 occurrences, you could do the end date. I typically will put none on here, and I have different triggers within my business to tell me to go in here and cancel this or update it. Um, a lot of my tenants renew. So I'll typically keep this going and then I might come in here and update the rental amount if I need to, okay? Uh, the billing address, the terms, and then of course down here, really important monthly rent. They're not gonna pay me a security deposit every month. So I'm gonna hit the garbage can on that and delete it. They will be paying me monthly rent, okay? So they're gonna be paying me monthly rent um, at a rate of one times 850, the class is already filled in, okay? And then this is ready to go and I can just hit save template and then every single time, you know, the 10 days before the first of the month, QuickBooks is going to generate that invoice and send it to my customer. All right, and really important is to be able to work with your recurring templates, you would just hit this gear icon here and click under lists, recurring templates, it shows up there. And you can see it's named Wendell Johnson uh, scheduled. It kind of tells you everything you need to know there. You might want to set up a naming convention for these just so you, you know, once you get a lot of them, you can kind of, maybe you want to put the unit there as well, which is fine. You can just edit and go into the name and adjust that there. All right. So that's super important. Definitely use that. Um, if you're, if you're going to be using QuickBooks to send your invoices, you you definitely want to use that. All right. So now I want to get into chart of accounts. So chart of accounts is super important. This is a, a space that if you spend some time now, early on, as you're setting up QuickBooks, you're going to save a ton of time later. 
All right, and one specific area that you're gonna save time is in your taxes. So um, I don't know if it's happened to you, but you get in and your, your accountant is asking you for your rental and they're asking you for certain categories. All right, so what I've decided to do is, let's pull up, actually I have a tax return here for one of my rental properties. You are probably familiar with this. If you're not, um, you should become familiar with this. This is the IRS form 8825 that would be filled out for your rental properties. So this entity here only owns one rental property. And so this is the sheet that is filled out for it. And what is cool is you see these, these categories here, that is what your accountant is going to need to fill in. And if you don't have those exact categories, you can usually figure it out and map it to the right place. But I found that that's a really annoying process. So I've set up my accounting books and my chart of accounts to almost exactly match this. And I suggest you do the same or come close to it. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I've done some of it in my chart of accounts. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce these out so that I can look at kind of both at once. All right, so I have, here's what the IRS wants over here. And here's what I have in my accounting books. If I scroll down, the other really important thing I'm gonna talk about here when it comes to your rental properties or even your flips, my philosophy is that you set up your expenses, anything related to a specific property. So you're going to put in a class of one, two, three Main Street, four, five, six Maple, whatever the case might be. It's related to a property. You're either flipping it or you're, it's a rental property or it's a wholesale. All of those expenses, in my opinion, my philosophy is that those go under cost of goods sold. Okay, I'm going to show you why in a second, but that is how I run my business and I love doing it that way. Expenses and cost of goods sold are not the same, same thing. They both impact your, your profit, but cost of goods sold is expenses directly related to the services you provide, right? So in manufacturing, it's easy, right? What is the cost of the raw materials so that I can make the thing, make the widget to sell, right? That's pretty easy to understand, but in the service industry, the way it works is that what are the expenses, the costs of goods sold? So what am I selling? I'm selling the service of rent, right? My costs associated with that are the utilities, the property insurance, the property tax, the repairs, okay? I like to call those costs of goods sold. I'm gonna show you how it works on a profit and loss as well. Okay, so with that in mind, you see I scroll down to my cost of goods sold section, okay? In my chart of accounts, and you'll see that a lot of these already line up with this okay so obviously gross rent rents is a revenue item advertising i have advertising in cost of goods sold auto and travel i have in cost of goods sold cleaning and maintenance is right here business insurance interesting i don't think this belongs here business insurance would be liability insurance workers comp to me that is not directly related to any property so i would do i would either change this and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this from cost of goods sold to an expense because I believe that's where it should go. Okay. And I don't want it in my cost of goods sold. I don't want to be able to say that I spent money on business insurance associated with the property. This one here is just general cost of goods sold. I would never use that. It's not specific enough for me. I don't know if they'll let me, I'll make this inactive. I would never use that. It's just not specific enough. Um, I try to get everything into, into the right place here. Commissions is in here. Um, it's fine. I'm not sure exactly why they have that on there, but that's fine. Property insurance lines up with insurance. Um, property taxes is right here. All right. Utilities is right here. Now, I like to break down my utilities further. I like to go electric, gas, water, and sewer. Either way, it doesn't really matter. As long as I have the top line item, that's what I'm gonna give my accountant, okay? Now you'll see here, I have this one property related, this is actually property related professional services, okay? And, um, and this is property management. It's also other professional fees. Okay, so that there's legal and professional fees. I can take this top line number and it goes directly there. All right, I also have repairs. I have shipping here. I don't think I'm really gonna use that one so much for rental. Um, that's, to me, again, one more of a general thing. If I'm sending, if I'm buying postage or I'm sending things, that's more of a general business expense. So I'm going to edit that and move it over to expenses. All right, so let's just call it, sure. 
All right. So now I feel pretty good about this. My cost of goods sold is exactly matches what's going to be on my tax return. Now, if you're flipping houses as well, you'll probably have a couple more. And we'll get to that. Uh, right now, I'm kind of focused on rentals. So you can have more than more than these for cost of goods sold. Um, but this is my recommendation is that you have these aligned as closely as possible to your taxes. All right. So I'm going to bounce this out and we're going to talk through how this would look on your profit and loss now. Okay. So let's go over to, let me get my drawer back and let's go to reports. Let's pull a profit and loss. Now there's not going to be much on here. I haven't been doing much with this business, but I just want to take, let's just take like last year and let me show all. Okay. So I just kind of ran that report. It doesn't have anything on it right now, but I just want to show you what it would look like. So your income is going to go up here. Now we haven't talked about the chart of accounts for that. We're going to just make some adjustments there as well, but obviously I'm going to have rental income. All right. And then here you see my cost of goods sold. Here's all those categories that I just lined out there, right? All those things that are going to um, come through uh, to my taxes. Now the deleted ones won't show up. And actually a lot of these won't show up unless I have all rows. Um, actually, if I do active, uh, yeah, it needs to. Okay. So it won't show up when I don't have anything in it. All right. And then I have my expenses down here. And so what will happen is all my rental and, and um, flipping activity is going to go under cost of goods sold. And if I kind of just simplify it there. I'm going to have my income. I'm going to have my cost of goods sold. That gives me my gross profit, right? That gives me my profit in activities directly related to properties. That's exactly a report that I'm interested in. And then beyond that, I'm going to have my other expenses, right? And my other expenses are going to be my business insurance, my rent that I pay for the office that I have, maybe my salaries and my wages. Um, all of those things that are more general expenses, general advertising, I are going to go on those expenses and then I'll be able to see how my business is operating. Like what percentage, and we can probably add a column for that. Um, we, what percentage of my general is showing up in, um, in my revenue. All right. Let me just see rows, columns. Let's do, here we go. Percent of, row percent of income okay now it's not going to show anything right now i don't have any data in here but wouldn't it be great to see what your cost of goods sold is as a percentage of your income and we're going to show that as we start working through and putting some actual numbers in here all right the last thing i want to talk about is logging your expenses by class and then pulling this exact report so that i could see my expenses by class all right so i'm going to add just a couple expenses here all right, so I'm gonna skip some stuff. I'm gonna say advertising, cost of goods sold, right? I'm gonna say $400 for uh, 123 Main Street. I'm gonna say save and new. I'm gonna do another expense here. Let's call this uh, gas utilities. Okay, and let's say this is like 35.89. This is for 456 Maple. All right, so now I have an expense per, right? Not much data, but we're gonna get there. All right, now what I love to do is let's take this profit and loss for this year, okay? Let's pull it for this year. You see, I have my rental income is for that 123 Main Street, I think. Now this tells me how I'm doing for my rentals in general. This is great, this is a really good report. However, wouldn't it be interesting to see how I'm doing by property, right? And that's why we are tracking everything by class. So take this exact report and display columns by classes, run report, exactly what I want, right? Here are my properties across the top, my rental income, how much I'm spending, my gross profit per property. And I can take this exact report and we're gonna fill it out. Next, next um, video, I'm gonna show you what this looks like with actual data in it. And you're gonna be really excited. I get excited about it because all I need to do is either give my accountant access to my books and they can pull this exact report or just print it out and they have exactly what they need, right? They have every single property like that. All right, so as you can see, as you set it up right, you have your classes set up right, you have your chart of accounts set up right, and you're just organized the right way in QuickBooks Online, you're gonna save a ton of time uh, down the line with your accountant and setting up for taxes, but you're also gonna give yourself 
the information you need as a business owner to see how you're doing on a regular basis. And the reporting capability in QuickBooks is amazing. It keeps getting better. I'm going to show you how to how to save these reports, how to send them to certain stakeholders in your business. And you can run all of your financials for your rental properties right out of QuickBooks, which is super exciting. So um, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I would like for you to comment on this video and tell me exactly what you have a question about when it comes to QuickBooks Online related to property management, managing tenants, managing rental properties. Let me know what you want to see so that you can uh, you know, have an influence on our next videos. Until then, uh, good luck with QuickBooks. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Thank you.